You're listening to Release Your Resistance with Bex Beltran, episode 59. Welcome to Release Your Resistance. This is Bex. The only reason why any of us don't have what we want in life is because of our own resistance. Right now, I'm learning how to recognize and release my resistance, and this podcast tells you how you can release your resistance so that you can live the exact life that you want. Let's get started. Rituals, routines, and habits. Aren't these interesting words? When you saw the title or when you heard me introduce it, did anything pop to mind immediately for you? Do you group these three concepts together or are rituals, routines, and habits all independent and different for you? Before thinking about this episode, I may not have grouped them all together, but the more I think about them, the more similarities I see. A ritual is a set sequence of activities involving gestures, words, actions, or objects. One definition I found also suggested a ritual is performed in a sequestered place. Okay. (laughs) A routine is a sequence of actions regularly followed. It's a fixed program. And a habit is a settled or regular tendency or practice, especially one that is hard to give up. I've also seen a ritual described as a routine with meaning. So maybe your morning pattern of waking up, washing your hands and face, brushing your teeth and all that isn't super meaningful to you, so you consider it a routine. But then when you lovingly prepare your morning drink, you choose and light the perfect candle, you settle into position and open your journal knowing that this is the best part of your day, even though it's also a pattern of activities, maybe it is so meaningful to you, maybe you consider it a ritual like I do. Maybe we would interchange the words ritual and routine and use ritual more if there were any kind of woo or ceremonial aspects. Or maybe we would consider a ritual as something we do more intentionally and purposefully, while routines and habits might have just evolved or happened by default. I don't know that the specific words that we use to describe what we do really matter. So if you think of your repeated actions as a ritual, a routine, or a habit, or even as a practice, maybe it doesn't really matter, unless the name you choose to use does have specific significance to you personally. A short interruption here for a little disclaimer in case you are one of those people who hates routine. I hope I didn't wait too long to address you personally. I totally get that doing things the same way every time is not everyone's cup of tea. So I have some thoughts and suggestions for you too. Don't discount this entire episode yet. I am going to address those anti-routine ideas in a little while. My reason for bringing all of this up for you is to share with you some of the rituals, routines, and habits I have noticed in my life. Some of them I have carefully cultivated. Some of them I just inherited or accepted by default. And some of them I used to do and love and have now since discontinued. And even though I told you that I don't really think the specific name we use matters, I will share them with you in order of how I think about them. First my rituals, then my routines, and finally a few simple habits I have cultivated for myself that can really improve your life if you're not already doing them. And as you listen to my rituals, routines, and habits, I want you to consider them for yourself. Maybe you're already doing them or something like them. Maybe you tried them before and they didn't really work for you, or maybe you'll hear one from me now and decide to try it for yourself. And I want to hear all about your rituals, routines, and habits too. What do you love that I don't know about yet? What works so well for you and improves your life? 
You've probably already heard about most of my rituals. Many of my rituals are part of my overarching journaling ritual, which got its own episode called My Beloved Morning Ritual. And since the time that I recorded that episode for you, my ritual has evolved to include other mini rituals as well. For example, every Monday when I start out the top of my journal entry, I write morning pages and then instead of just Monday, the date and the time, I write manifesting Monday. And then sometime throughout my journaling that morning, I'll make a short list of what I want to manifest for myself. I don't have the expectation that what I want will be manifested within that same week. Sometimes it is. I don't have the expectation that what I want will be manifested externally with no action on my part. Many times I already have a plan for how I will create what I want, how I personally, through my work and my effort, will manifest whatever I want into existence. Sometimes... If I'm slow to think about what I would like to manifest for myself, it turns into a moment of gratitude because I realize how I already have everything I want and need. Sometimes after I've written out what I want to manifest, I'll check back to a few of the previous Manifesting Mondays and realize that some items on those lists have already come into existence. Amazing. Happy, thank you, more please. What about you? Do you have a regular manifesting ritual? Would you consider starting one? Another ritual that has become a weekly occurrence for me happens on Saturday. Last year at the beginning of the lockdown, a friend sent me the most fun Corona Care package with soap and nail stuff and a journal and a candle and my favorite markers, basically everything I love. And the candle is called Endless Weekend. So I use that candle every Saturday morning to set the stage for my Saturday journaling. In addition to the day, date, and time, on Saturdays, I now also make a note of the moon phases, both astronomical and astrological. So for example, last Saturday was the new moon in Pisces. I also make a note of where I am in my own personal monthly cycle. I am not sure of the exact purpose of these additional notations yet, but I like taking a moment to notice where I am in those cycles And eventually I wonder if I will be able to look back and notice any patterns or correlations. On Saturdays, I do my usual journaling, but I also do a weekly evaluation for myself. I reflect back over the week to think about what went well. Then I also note what didn't work. And finally, I write out what I will do differently and what I'll continue to do in the next week. I use different symbols for each section, hearts for what went well, dashes for what didn't work, and check boxes for what I will do. I love this reflection exercise. Frequently throughout the next week, I'll come back to my what I'll do section and check some of the boxes, or maybe seeing them will remind me or re-motivate me that that's what I wanted to do. The other rituals that have been incorporated into my journaling happen monthly. You've heard me talk about my thankful 30th ritual, where I make a list of 30 things I'm thankful for on the 30th day of each month. And I frequently invite other people to do this ritual too and share one to two things from their lists. What are we going to do here in February? (laughs) We'll make a list of 28 things on the 28th. At the end of last year, I also shared with you my monthly ritual of having an interview with myself. Both of these monthly rituals have brought me so much awareness and gratitude for myself and my life, and I highly recommend you incorporate these for yourself if it feels right. And if you're hearing about these for the first time or if you need a refresher, I will link to each of the episodes that I just mentioned where I discussed them on the show notes for this episode. Just go to bexby.org slash rituals, R-I-T-U-A-L-S, to find the links. The annual ritual that I've been doing 
Even longer than I've been journaling is my birthday list ritual. This ritual also has an entire episode devoted to it, which is also linked to the show notes at bexb.org slash rituals. And I love the ritual even more since recording that episode for you because it is my most popular episode so far. And I think many listeners of this podcast found me through that episode. And I am so glad that this topic is coming up for me here in February because it's a good reminder for me to go check my birthday list from last July to see what I want to create and accomplish by my next birthday coming up in July of 2021. Let's talk about routines. I think of my routines as more practical. I have a few routines of getting everything set up and laid out before I start. I do this when I take a shower, when I put on makeup. I just like to gather all the things together and lay them out, and then it's all ready for me when I want to use it. After journaling, I also have a daily routine of checking my finances. I use the Personal Capital app, and I love how it keeps me pretty dialed in to where my money is and how my investments are going. And I think this routine keeps me in an abundance mindset around money, and it also keeps my money management and my goals at the top of my mind. I love creating routines with other people too. There are a few people in my life that we've created some monthly or bi-weekly routines together, like a phone call or hangout time. And I've got a group of friends with whom, in my opinion, I guess I should check to see if we all feel the same. We are in the process of creating a group routine of taking a short trip together just to have some uninterrupted time away to spend together. Surprisingly, I don't have a lot of routines with my husband, or when we do get into routines, they usually do not last. They don't stretch out for long, and I'll tell you my theory on this in a minute. Speaking of routines that don't stand the test of time, I have also noticed a few rituals and routines from my own past that I've discarded, either with an intention to stop or just because it faded away and I forgot about it. A few years ago, I was really into tarot, and I used to take myself somewhere for coffee or breakfast on the first day of each month to give myself an in-depth tarot reading and to use that reading to write my intention for the month. And I had a few different rules or maybe strong suggestions for myself about this ritual. I wanted to try a new place each time. I wanted it to be in a pretty environment, and I also wanted a place where I could read the cards and write in my journal with minimal distractions and interruptions. So right away, you might see some of the reasons the ritual did not stick around. That, that's a tall order to find that perfect environment and then keep finding a new version of it each month. And doing the ritual on the first of every month also kind of felt arbitrary and it didn't always fit well with my schedule or with my plans. So that discarded ritual has highlighted a few things for me. Don't force a ritual. <laughs> Don't make it too specific with too many rigid requirements. And honor that as things change, things change. Tarot is hardly a part of my life or my self-reflection as it used to be. So it makes sense that this ritual would not be as important to me anymore. I also used to have a daily routine of taking a selfie at the same time every day and then answering the same prompts in a quick entry journal on my phone. I really liked that routine as I was doing it, and I rarely ever missed a day. And I am so glad that I did have that routine and that I still have all the selfies and the entries from that time. But again, as things change, things change, and I just don't want or need that routine in my life now. Maybe it'll come back. Maybe it won't. What if you hate routine? As promised earlier, I want to address people who are routine-averse. I would classify my husband this way. He doesn't like to plan ahead. He definitely has different time management and organizing strategies than I do, I see him subtly rolling his eyes when I suggest we pause what we're doing or about to do long enough so I can make a list or write out a plan. And I think it is so 
funny when routine people try to convince non-routine people of how good it is or how easy it is. It's like two people speaking to each other in different languages. Yes, words are being said and heard, but nothing is getting through. So this is not me trying to tell you Just do it the same way every time or just make a list or just put it in your calendar or just lay everything out in order of how you'll use it. No, I know that is not your style. I would have you consider why it's not your style. Like maybe you're thinking I'm a disorganized person. I lose everything. I run late. Again, I'm not trying to argue with you and solve those sentences for you. And I am not saying that routine is better than spontaneous. I know it's not. I just want to point out that those self descriptions, if you're using those, which you might not be, those are your thoughts. And by considering them and being open about them, maybe you can see how in some cases, your thoughts are a form of resistance, especially if you're using and believing those thoughts as a way not to do something. Instead of calling it a routine, would you want to think of it as a sacred ritual? Or could you think of everything you do in a specific order as success favors for your future self? Like my nightly routine of setting up the coffee so that it starts itself for me every morning. What a lovely favor for my future self. Even if you don't like structure and routine, You probably are living by many structures and routines, even if you wouldn't identify them as such. And if you spend any time with someone who is a planner and organizer and who loves to put things in sequence, I bet that person could pretty quickly identify a few routines that you do follow that you might not even be aware of. I have recognized a few in my husband, who is a much more spontaneous person than I am. And finally, to end today's episode, I want to give you some quick habits I intentionally practice that I really think can improve your life. First is grocery list layout. Make your grocery list in order of the layout of the store. If you go to the same grocery store all the time, and if you write a list, write it in the general order of how you travel through the store. Of course, this assumes that you go the same way every time. It works for me. My husband has started to kind of get my system, but I don't know if he would ever do it on his own. He likes the zigzag method of grocery shopping, so I guess you get more steps with that method. Another grocery habit, you can get into the habit as soon as you put away your groceries at home, also put your reusable grocery bags right back in the car. Make that a part of your routine of putting the food away. It's just as important as putting frozen items in the freezer so that they don't melt to put the reusable grocery bags back in the car so that they are ready for you when you need them for your next shopping trip. And speaking of shopping, for years I have carried a very lightweight collapsible shopping bag in my purse. It has come in handy so many times. I really hate getting plastic shopping bags. And when I randomly stop into a store, or if I happen to be shopping with someone who didn't bring a bag, or when I didn't bring enough of my own bags for my shopping trip, I love that I always have a spare with me. Put your keys, your phone, your mask, whatever it is, in the same spot every time. Back in the days when I bought a new purse or a new bag pretty frequently, one of my criteria was to make sure there was a specific pocket for my phone. And one of the first things we established when we moved into this new house was the spot where my purse and my keys would go. Once you create the habit for yourself of where you will always put something and you always take the one extra second to put it in its place, you'll never find yourself running around looking for where you put something when you're in a rush. Open and sort your mail over the recycle bin. When you get all of your mail out of the mailbox, head straight to the recycle bin to throw all the extra pieces of paper away as soon as you open. If you pay bills online, those return envelopes can go right into the bin too. So you should only be left with a very slim stack of bills or correspondence that you actually need to do something with. This really reduces the stacks of paper clutter that seem to build up. Multitask with audio. I will 
always advocate for listening to podcasts, audiobooks, or trainings while driving, working out, meal prepping, folding laundry, and any other activity that doesn't require your undivided audio attention. Listening to podcasts changed my life by improving my commute a hundred times back when I worked at a corporate job. I didn't have the dread of the drive, and I didn't get grouchy when there was a traffic delay. Instead, I was glad I got that extra time to keep listening. I also love transforming mundane chores into opportunities to learn. And the final tip that I have for you today is carry a timer. (laughs) Carry a timer with you at all times and use it for all things. This habit would have sounded a little crazy a few years ago, but now you probably already have one on you. Your watch and your phone, or even just use your microwave if you're in the kitchen. If you decide to scroll on social media, but you don't want to spend too long, set a timer. If you're procrastinating doing a task that you really don't like to do, tell yourself you only have to work on it for 20 minutes and set a timer. And I've recently started using the website timeanddate.com when I'm sitting at my computer because I can really get myself sucked into whatever I'm doing or looking at or reading. So having a timer go off to remind me to move on to the next thing is very helpful. And I certainly need this reminder, this habit now that I'm dealing with the Gilbert time warp, which apparently is a thing. A few of you have let me know. And now you know about all of my rituals, routines, and habits. What do you think? Are these all just obvious and you're already doing the ones that apply to you? Or did you hear an idea for something new that you might try for yourself? Tell me your rituals, routines, and habits. I know there are some great ones out there that I have never even considered yet. And since I've told you about a few of mine... Has it made you think about your own routines and rituals and habits? Would you say that your daily, weekly, and monthly routines are intentional or unintentional? Do you create rituals to do favors for your future self? What about your habits? Do you have any bad habits? We didn't even talk about those, but what do you think? How did your quote-unquote bad habits start? Some listeners have told me that they listen to this podcast as part of their routine every Friday morning. So thank you for making me a regular part of your life. I love thinking about you and what you would like to hear and what you might think about what I'm sharing with you. And I am so honored you are giving me a little of your attention each week. Thank you for listening. Have a great week. I will talk with you again in seven days. This has been Release Your Resistance. Thank you for listening. If you like this podcast, make sure you're subscribed and leave a review on Apple Podcasts. Also, think about someone who you know who would love this episode and share it with them. There should be a share button on your app if you're listening to this on your phone. If you'd like to continue this conversation one-on-one or in real time, come visit me on my site at beckspeed.org to see how we can work together. 